Today's topic will be demonstrating how to use the Serona Omnicam DI unit. Here we have our acquisition phase. This is where we'll have our different views that we'll be seeing. We'll use our camera view, which shows us inside the patient's mouth what we're actually acquiring. Here we have the image capture view, which shows us the models that are being created off those images that we're scanning with our camera view. Below that we have the areas to be captured. Here we have our lower jaw, upper jaw, and our buccal bite catalogs. These are where we'll store the images. Here we have the Neeson model. We'll be scanning tooth number 30 and we'll be scanning the maxillary right. At this point in acquisition, we're now going to enter the patient's mouth. We're going to start on the occlusal surface, distal, and then we're going to pull mesially. Here I rotate the camera uh, up and down a little bit to acquire the information on the contacts. Here I rotate it to the buckle facial aspect and then I push back distally filling in any blue information I'm missing along the way. Here I rotate it around to the lingual aspect and I'm going to pull it measly towards the front of the mouth. And as I go back and forth I check to make sure that all little blue areas have been accounted for. Here I go back again checking my interproximal contacts to make sure that we have a good fit. At this point, I'll rotate the model, see if I'm missing information. On the premolars, I have a little bit of information missing, so I go back. The camera locks on to what it previously had and will fill in the information automatically. At this point, I'm going to move on to my upper jaw. We'll enter the patient's mouth. We'll start occlusally, and we'll pull measly along that occlusal surface, nice and slow to acquire the needed information, at which point we'll rotate to the buccal facial aspect. We'll push back distally. And as we go, I miss a little blue, so I come back, I acquire that information, I row over to the occlusion, back to the lingual aspect, and I pull back towards the mesial of the patient to acquire all that lingual information that is needed to have a good uh, restoration. Now we'll go to buckle, and at buckle we're going to scan enough information on both sides of the mandibular and the maxillary right hand side, including the gingival surface, to be able to have a good buckle bite that will stitch effectively for us. At this screen, we will now get ready to move forward to create our virtual models. The importance of scanning really plays a factor in our creating of these virtual models. If we have to make several passes going back and forth over and over again while we're scanning inside the patient's mouth, it'll cause us to acquire more and more information, overlapping what we have currently with more and more images, creating a larger file. So when it goes to render that file and create the, ma the jaw off that file, it takes much longer. So it's the difference between having 100 good images <clears throat> and 2,000 poor images. And so if we can do nice, slow, steady scans watching our screen, and watching the area that's being captured to make sure that we're getting the correct information on that first pass, it will eliminate time later on at this stage that it takes to generate and create these virtual models for us. At this stage, we're beginning to finish creating the j lower and upper jaw models. At this point, we're now creating the buckle bite uh, virtual model that we'll need to utilize to stitch to the upper and the lower jaw to find the patient's occlusal height of the prepped area. Now that we are in this stage, the new software will now automatically stitch the buckle bite for you if you acquired enough information during that buckle bite scan by getting enough gingival area and tooth sections uh, before and after the prepped area. Now that we have this information and it's stitched for us, we can now move on to the margin stage. Now that we're here, we're going to move on into the uh, marginal draw margin stage in which we're going to zoom in onto the prepped area. We'll double click, we'll drag across the prepped area, single click, drag back across and double click on the red dot that we had. At this point, I can see the line that it auto generated for me. I can double click on the blue line, do some single clicks, single clicks, single clicks, and then keep going around to draw where the margin actually is if it got off a little bit. When I re-click onto a blue line, it will 
reroute the previous blue margin line to where I desire it to be, which is currently in white. Once I go around, I will double check. I re-rotate around to make sure that I am on the margin area. If I am off, I will just simply click, single click, single click, click again, and I get the margin drawn that I am needing. At that same point, I'm able to zoom in and take a look at my interproximal contacts. Now this is a new uh, additional feature called prep analysis where you're able to actually see the height and depth of the prep to make sure that you have enough room for the desired restoration and material request. On the screen, we will begin to log into our Serona Connect portal which will take the digital impression and get it ready to be submitted to Express Dental Laboratory. Here it will upload the file. We'll then go to our next stage and we'll want to select the patient's gender, add any additional notes that are needed. We'll want to make sure that Express Dental Laboratory is highlighted and then we'll select the days that are needed for the three-day turnaround that we provide. Once the date is selected, we can upload to the cart and then we will submit the cart and once we have submitted the cart we'll then commission it and that will send us a notification that you have uploaded the case at which point we can download the case and get it ready for manufacturing if you would like to track this you can go to our web-based cloud software and track the case status in this next segment we're going to observe a technician scanning a live patient to demonstrate how to position yourself while scanning. As a best practice, if you'll notice how the technician has positioned himself to be focused on the screen where he can see the camera view and the images being captured at all times to clearly observe the information in which he is acquiring as he is going through the acquisition stage. We'll now observe how the technician is holding the wand inside the patient's mouth and we'll want to watch how he moves it fluidly over the patient's teeth to acquire the information that is needed to produce a proper impression for the skin. Here we notice that the test technician is finding his location in the patient's mouth to be able to have a good starting point to start acquiring the proper information for the scan. Here we can see him rolling it and now looking back onto the screen to see where he is scanning at to acquire the proper information. He pulls out, he'll reposition, he is still looking at the screen, checking as he goes along to make sure that he gets the correct information for the interior six case. He's checking interproximal contacts, he's making sure that the information is correct, he'll move the wand to different angles to get the information that is needed to fulfill the scan to give us the proper digital impression that we need to be able to submit to the lab. He can zoom in on, this, on the images acquired to really look at it and get a good idea of what is needed to have a good impression. Once he goes back, he can, the scanner and its software will automatically find the position in which he last scanned and auto stitch to that and start acquiring information that is needed in those areas. He'll reposition the scanner, he goes back in, he begins scanning again, and when he's done, he checks every time. Now he's moving on to the other jaw, and he'll start posteriorly scanning on the occlusal surface, coming around, going to that buckle, flowing to that lingual, across the incisal edging, and he flips this, the scanner around to get the proper angle again. Now he's going back along that lingual and buckle edge rotating over those teeth to get the proper incisal edging that is needed for the digital impression. And here we see him going back towards those back molars and premolars to hit the occlusion once again. He comes around, we scan on that lingual aspect to get the information. The other nice thing about the Omnicam DI is if you were to get a back scan that throws the information off, you can easily use the cut tool, remove that information, and then the technician was easily able to go back to his last good spot and rescan the information that was needed and fulfilled into the model. 
We hope this short presentation has helped in your decision of implementing and adopting the Serona Omnicam DI unit to help better serve your patients and streamline the impression process within your practice. For more information, contact Express Dental Laboratory at 405-217-2282. Thank you.